Hello, Danny Smith here, and I want to thank you today for taking a few minutes to watch one of our tutorial videos. In today's video, uh, we're going to show you how to do some basic airbrush and custom paint, and I encourage you to watch this video even if you don't think that you know how, because you may be surprised at how easy some of these actually are whenever we show you uh, some of these simple techniques. Chris is going to show you how to do some realistic ghost flames. Uh, using just a couple of stencils and Preston's going to show you how to uh, do some graphic work so we'll go ahead and get started now whenever we start thinking about the tools we need whenever it comes to airbrushing uh, one of the the first tools we think of is of course you know an airbrush and, and if, if, unless we're able to grab that airbrush and walk over to the car and just start freehanding it's going to take other tools and techniques and methods to help us out to be able to produce some of these things that we want to want to want to paint so uh, if you're like me you know I don't have that artistic ability so you know I'm gonna show you in this video other methods that you can use and still be able to do this type of work these are techniques that anyone can learn because as I mentioned I'm not really a natural artist or anything like that now Chris uh, be showing you some of this and she is awesome she can really do this stuff freehand and can show you some really cool things so if you do have that ability you know you can really pick this up fast and if not hey there's still hope for you too because if I can learn it you should be able to too because um, now you may be asking yourself this question why do I want to know this you know why do I want to invest my time to learn how to airbrush and there's a couple of things I want to point out and one is, you know, of course, to be able to do your own graphics and designs. Uh, you know, this is going to save you money because I, I don't know if you ever had to, uh, tried to having this work done, but it is very expensive. And this will save you money learning how to do this yourself. Perhaps it may uh, make you money. I know I've had students uh, do airbrush and graphic works on things like uh, electric guitars and the cases of computers and, you know, all kinds of things. I mean, you're not limited just to automotive. I mean, this there's mailboxes. I mean, there's a tons of things that you can you can do with these talents. But what I really want to uh, focus on is the satisfaction that you get of saying, "I did it." Now, everything offers this, but this type of work, you can step back and you can see the end result. And you know, whenever I painted my first car, that's what really hooked me into this industry, made me passionate about it. Because I, you know, I worked a lot as in high school, worked many, many hours, put a lot of effort into getting this car ready, and I painted it. And I, you know, I was able to step back and see that end result. And that's what really, you know, I still remember that feeling to this day. You know, knowing that that I did that. And if you do something like this, you know, you can show your friends, and they're going, "Whoa, man, where'd you have that done?" You know, and you're going to be like, "Well, I did it." You're going to know, you know, that you did a good job. And I think that's really what drives us and what it's all about. Now, in this video, I'm going to show you how to, the steps to do that. Now, the hood that's in, uh, showing right here, this picture, uh, that was the old hood we had, and we had to actually do some repair and repaint. Now, I'm not going to go over that part of it in this tutorial. This is more about the airbrushing. So, we're just going to assume that you have a hood that's, uh, you know, off a car that's ready to paint, and we're going to show you what you need to do, uh, to, you know, to get your, your artwork on there. So one of the things you want to do is prepare the service. And it's very important because the cars we drive are, you know, in their environments with, you know, diesel smoke. And we wax our cars and, you know, a lot of contamination that gets on there. And this can lead to a lot of problems if we don't properly clean it. And this is a step that sometimes is overlooked but will end up in, you know, in disaster with fish eyes and just all kinds of paint problems. So any paint project that you're doing, always wash it first. You can use soap and water. Just make sure if it's a car soap, it don't have any type of the added waxes or anything like that because that's silicone. If it's dish soap, that works good. Just make sure it doesn't have the, the ingredients to keep your hands soft because that has stuff in there that, that you don't want you know, on the surface. So make sure just none of those type of additives are in the either car soap or dish soap. Uh, next thing you're want, going to want to do after you wash it is you can wipe down with some wax and grease remover and this, does, this will assure that all traces of contamination are gone. Then you want to sand the surface with 800 to 1000 grit uh, wet or dry sandpaper. Now the reason you want to do this is because you want to sand the entire surface because you're going to clear coat the entire surface. And if you try to put either airbrush paint 
or any kind of paint or clear coat on top of an unsanded surface it's going to peel and I know you don't want that and we're going to put a lot of time in this so we don't want it peeling so by sanding it that gives, puts small scratches in the surface and it provides a chemical adhesion you know it provides that where it's going to stick and it won't peel off so we must sand it now you don't want to go coarser than this for example 400 grit wet or dry or anything like that because that's too coarse uh, after you clear coat it you're probably going to be able to see through the clear coat and see those scratches and I know you don't want that so 800 to 1000 you, you sand it with that and after you clear coat it you will never even know it's been sanded it works great next thing you're going to want to do is mask the area that you're going to do your graphics with trans mask film and that's basically just a, uh, a masking paper with a low tack adhesive on the back side of it you know it's low tack so you don't pull paint off and you apply it to the surface that you're going to do your graphics and then you can put your like for your drawing or whatever onto that that trans mask film and uh, we'll, we'll show you a couple different ways that you can do that now uh, before we go I don't I want to, I want to mention not to worry about uh, for example, if you've never heard of this type of masking paper or something, be, don't get caught up in trying to figure all this out as we go. Because I promise at the end of this video, I'm going to show you where you can get all these uh, supplies. I've, I've got a resource where you can get a lot more training, very detailed airbrush training. Uh, you know, all that is, I'm going to have at the end. And if you want to learn more about air, uh, airbrushing, there's even a course there that you, you have access to that you can, uh, I'll give you the resource to it and uh, you know you can learn you know all the basics to airbrushing I mean everything I'm gonna provide that for you at the end so just sit back and enjoy this video so one method that uh, you can use I mean once you have that that trans mask on there is you can just freehand your design on there you know just get you a pencil and start start uh, designing it on there draw it out sketch it out but you might be saying hey wait I thought this was a technique that you know if I wasn't that good at freehand that I could do and that's true you can trace it if you can trace I promise you can do this and you may be thinking well, you know where do I get the ideas and to, you know where am I gonna come up I'm not creative well you know with magazines and computers uh, you should have all the ideas that you need uh, for example, you can take a magazine and uh, cut out something that you like and, and blow it up and you, you can use that design to transfer to your trans mask. Or, you know, same thing with the computer, you can print something and use that. There's really a lot of resources out there. So whenever we get our, uh, our w whatever design we have, uh, the way we're going to transfer this is we're going to use some carbon paper and we are going to put the carbon paper down on this panel and remember this piece right here that, that was highlighted that piece that highlight that, that is highlighted actually is not uh, part of the trans mask that's part that we have traced that we're going to use and it would be whatever you're using that we're going to put on top of this carbon paper and we put it on top of there and basically align it where we want and all we do is trace the lines and whenever you're pushing down with that pencil or pen uh, it's pushing through the paper through this carbon paper and actually leaves our outline on the trans mask it does all that for us you peel all that off and you have your design there ready for the next step now I'm going to show you another quick uh, quick way now this is old school this projector anyway if you have one of these old overhead projectors I mean teachers had these when I was in school you know they'd be up there right and everybody could see it uh, it is kind of old school but man those things work great for this I mean you can adjust it you know to the size you want it just really works awesome uh, projects it up on the wall like here and we have a piece of paper there and we can just go and trace all that and you know just it makes it really simple it works great but you might be wondering you know what if I don't can't get one of those you know it may be hard to find well you know any portable computer projector will work just anything that you can use pro to project that image uh, hey that'll work or you can even project it straight onto the the surface that you're working on you know onto that trans paper there you can uh, project it straight to that and you can simply trace uh, straight on the paper without even using you know the the carbon paper you know just a couple different methods whatever works best for you you know you can use uh, whatever you prefer so you know if you think you lack creativity uh, or ideas 
I mean, really, with all the images on the computer and the internet and all the designs, magazines, I mean, really, are you limited? Really? I mean, you start looking at this, and whenever, especially if it's your project, your hood that you're going to do. I mean, you're probably going to be motivated and, and interested in it. And you start looking at these magazines, and oh, man, that's cool. And you find things on the computer. I mean, that's going to, you know, spark ideas, and it's going to get your, your uh, creativity uh, really thinking and rolling. I mean, really. I mean, it's endless. Whenever you get into this, it, with, with the internet and everything, uh, the, the ideas that you're going to come up with are, is not going to be limited. There's plenty of ideas. Now, I'm going to change gears just for a little bit and show you a little bit different way of doing this, and then we'll get back to this uh, the, the, the method that I'm showing you right now. Now, Chris here has, you know, she has already has her design. She freehanded it. And if you do freehand, hey, that's great. Just draw it on your paper and you're good to go. Now, on this, she's doing a little bit different. On the back side of this, she is putting a carpenter's chalk on there. And she's using this chalk, which is going to help her outline, you know, what she she's freehanded out. And you may be wondering why she just don't freehand it on to the hood. And that's because so she can get it symmetrical. And what that means is to get it both uh, same on both sides because she's actually just going to trace one side of the hood and then she's going to trace the other side of the hood so they're the same and I'm going to show you how to do that here in just a little bit now you, you, you may be wondering why is it so important to be symmetrical well it, it's not always important depending on what you're doing in your design uh, for example realistic flames you know that may not be symmetrical uh, asymmetrical may be fine with that so it kind of depends on your design but you know something like traditional flames on a hood probably you want the right side to match match the the left side you know that's where you want it to be the same and this method is going to work real good for something like that so basically basically she got she has it up there and remember that uh that uh, carpenter's um, chalk is on the back side of this and as she traces this it's going to leave that line where she traces and you notice on the bottom she's doing both sides because the bottom is not symmetrical. I mean, it uh, it's the, the the way the design is. It's different on both sides, so that don't have to be. But you look up where the skull is at. Uh, that has to be the same on both sides. So she's going to trace, you know, just this half. And then uh, after she does this half, she's going to basically flip this paper around, put uh, chalk on the, the other side of this, and then flip it around, retrace. And she'll have the exact same design on both sides pretty cool and if you can do some freehand art uh, artwork you know if you you already have that uh, ability I guarantee you that you can uh, be able to airbrush like a rock star if you already have that ability you'll pick airbrushing up in no time and if you don't you can pick it up too but it's a uh, it's something that you know some people have it more natural than other others and and if not it's just gonna take more practice but whenever you get that good where you can start freehanding things man you can take a something like this where you know you kinda of start sketching it out and it, you know that end result I was talking about I mean check that out that is awesome I mean that's cool you know, here's a tiger that uh, Chris did. I mean, it's just, that is awesome. Uh, get ideas in your head and go to thinking about them. Kind of sketch them out and take it from that and turn it into something like this. That's awesome. I mean, this is, this is really cool. And, you know, there's a lot of money to be made in this sort of thing. So, uh, it's really, really neat, you know, if you can freehand. But even if you can't, we're going to go back to the ways that we'll show you how you can do this without even being able to freehand. So, we have our... our uh, our, our everything traced out we have it on there our, our graphic works done so now what do we do well now we start cutting and this is just one other color which makes it simple if it's multiple colors we may have to do this in stages peel you know just the areas it's going to be one color and then peel the other area and paint it the, the you know the second or third color and, and so forth but this is just one other color so we're just going to keep on cutting till we have it all cut out and there it is you know that is cut out and ready to go so uh, we we can uh, move forward from this point and uh, what we're gonna do now well you know you may be asking you know is there a faster way because you know it does seem like a lot of tracing and a lot of cutting and you know there is a faster way that I'll mention real fast and that's a plotter because plotter is king if you're gonna be doing a lot of this 
Now, a plotter is basically a, a piece of equipment that you use. You, you get your artwork, you feed it to the computer, and it cuts it all out for you nice and neat on a vinyl sheet. You just put the piece of a vinyl on there, you know, it's got adhesive on it, and then you just pull the parts out that you're going to paint. Real simple. Except the plotter's not cheap. If you're not doing this as a profession, I'm, I'm pretty sure you're not going to have one of these, but they can come in very handy. It does all the cutting for you, speeds up the process. And if you don't have one and you really like this method and want to use it, I mean, there is still an option. You can go talk to a graphics design business and give them your artwork, and they can cut this out for you. It may cost you a little bit, but, you know, this is an option that you have. So anyway, back to, to the design. We've got, uh, we've got the areas that we're going to paint peeled off, and now we can paint the, the un, unmasked areas. And then we're going to peel it all off, and then... Voila, there it is. There's our design painted. So almost complete. You know, put a little clear clear coat on, and there it is. So pretty quick, pretty easy. Now we're going to talk about stencils. Because stencils are really cool. They can be your friend in this type of work. Don't be afraid to use them. They work really well. Uh, you can use them for uh, making hard edges, and we're going to show you about that, making these realistic flames. Uh, to kind of shoot the outline for you then you can come back and do some of the detail inside I mean in, in all these videos I'm going to show you here in a little bit or it shows you a lot of different cool ways to use stencils so really don't be afraid to use stencils there's a lot of them out there that you can use and, uh, and a lot of things that you can use uh, that you can find around the house but uh, we'll talk more about that later but anyway stencils are are available and I can show you you know where you can get a lot of those now we're going to talk about realistic flames, and you kind of see as it's going through the process, uh, left side's you know where Chris has been you know working on it, and of course the right side's the finished prod project. I mean this is something real cool, but it's really not that hard, and and you can learn this. And they have kits to do the entire panel, you know, uh, I mean the entire realistic flame, you know that make it real easy. But she does this just with I think one or two stencils, very simple process. So realistic ghost flames, we're going to kind of show you a little clip of this and then uh, we'll go ahead and move forward. I'm just going to show you this clip to got, just kind of want you to pay attention how she's using that one stencil to kind of make some of the, you know, the rounded edges of the flames, basically making hard edges. That's all it really takes to do realistic flames. Check out this uh, cool effect here. Cool, huh? Hello, Donnie Smith here, and today we're going to show you how to paint some realistic flames, how to do some airbrushing. And Chris Giltz is with us today, and she's going to demonstrate how to make some ghost effect style realistic flames. And she's going to show us a technique that anybody can learn, because just about all of this is done with stencils. I mean, you may use a little bit of freehand for just a little bit of highlight and shadowing, but for the most part, it is all done with stencils. And even if you don't have the artistic ability, you can learn this technique. So we're going to go through the process. Basically, what you start out with is just layering the flames with these stencils. And we're going to start out with a white. And what we've done is we've mixed some uh, inner coat clear with some white, and that makes a translucent white. <coughs> and the reason we do that is we don't want a real definite white because that would ruin the effect that we are trying to achieve of the kind of the ghost uh, style flames. So you want something that's translucent that you can layer and each layer that you put on you want to offset from the first layer so it kind of looks like different layers of flames as we go. So just kind of sit back we're going to put it in Anyway, I just wanted to show you a real quick clip of that and kind of show you how she's using those stencils to make those hard edges. Uh, video's not a real high quality video. We're going to be making some, some better videos. But uh, uh, kind of show you that. And, and I've got the full video. And when I show you where to go, you can find that too. But um, basically, just use those stencils to make those hard edges. And you can do it with something like realistic flames, you know, really easy. Now, Let's just talk about real quick what we learned in this. We'll do a quick recap. Uh, we talked about cleaning the surface, how important it is to remove those contaminants. We want to remove all traces of wax and grease. You know, use a soap without any type of additives like 
uh, you know, ingredients to keep your hands soft or wax mixed in with a car wash or anything like that. Uh, we know to sand it with 800 to 1000 so we have uh, adequate adhesion whenever we apply the uh, airbrush paint or the graphic paint and the clear coats. Uh, we discussed how to apply the trans mask and how, how we're going to uh, transfer our artwork either by you know the carbon paper the projector or even putting it straight onto the panel you know different ways of doing that and we went over cutting it out you know uh, either by hand and we also kind of talked about having a plotter where it does all that for you uh, we uh, sprayed the unmasked areas you know that we're going to paint and remember I mentioned if uh, you're doing different colors that may have to be done in stages uh, and that also at this point if you want to do any highlighting and shadowing you know you could do it at this point in a free hand you know you, you could do to your design just to just to make it a little bit better um, we're going to unmask it and, you know we talked about spraying that base coat on spraying that clear coat on and having that finished product that we're talking about and we talked about how to use stencils to do realistic flames and you know just for endless types of uh, you know there's a lot of stencil out there for a lot of different things so we talked about all those things now as I promised now I'm going to reveal to you where to find all this information where to find this stuff um, and there you're going to find free airbrush training there's a lot of videos really cool you're going to be amazed with some of these videos and there's there's videos there for beginners and advanced uh, really cool videos and as I mentioned, there's a course there that, you know, maybe you don't know how to hold an airbrush or don't know what a dagger stroke is or, you know, you don't really know about shading and highlighting and how to make three-dimensional uh, objects. And, you know, well, there's a basic uh, airbrush training course there that, you know, I have the resource for that. You can check into that. And all these supplies that I talked about plus a lot more, and you're going to see a lot more in these videos uh, that, that I'm going to tell you about. So, I mean, all that stuff, you know, that's available to you and there's a lot more and to find out more about that and, and, and everything there it is all you gotta do is go to collisionblast.com backslash airbrush it's all right there uh, the link is the link that's in the upper left hand corner of this website and you can click in the description right below this in the bottom left hand corner and it's a clickable link there and all you have to click it, you'll go straight to the website, and it'll all be right there for you. Now, if you like this video, uh, I'd appreciate it if you'd let us know. You know, hit the like button, let us know. And also, if you, when you go to the website, uh, in, in the tutorials that you like, we have like buttons on there too. You know, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the like buttons on there and let us know. That way, we know that you know some of you are finding value in, in these tutorials also encourage you to share this you know be a resource and share this with uh, your friends that you think may be uh, interested so encourage you to like and, and share these and uh, that pretty well wraps it up I thank you again for taking a few minutes out of your day to watch this video I encourage you to go to the website and I will see you there and uh, take care